This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, now I have a really nice uh, video. <laughs> I screwed up the opening tonight, so I had to redo it all over again. So the people with the video don't have to worry about it. It just looked fine the way it is. Anyway, it is uh, it is Thursday, and every now and then on a Thursday, we kind of make a, a telephone call, okay? Okay, everybody. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to call uh, Stephen Pearl. And the reason we're going to call him and we're talking before we call him is that when we call him, uh, he always says something weird. Let's see what happens. Okay. Come on. There it goes. All right. Hey, hey, everybody's busy with the working and the cooking and the sewing and the schlepping and the lifting. I tell you, I don't know what to do. Hello there, Stephen Pearl. Hey, Mr. Benzini, what are you doing? What are you doing? Oh, getting over a nasty cold. In fact, today is the first day I can taste things again. So it's a it's a glorious day here in the household. How did you get a cold? They always say that. How did I you got get a cold? cold. Yeah, Some, I know. How did I get a cold? Some germ came to the door. I said, "Come on in," and they said, "Ah, you sucker!" They always and then I had a cold. They always ask you those questions. How did you get the cold? Well, I don't know. Yeah. I you know, you usually you get. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I woke up one day and then I was sick. That was it. You get colds from touching people. You know no, I don't know who touching, touching. No, touchy, no. Feely, what happens touchy, is, let's say somebody is, uh, oh, I don't know, on the edge of illness, or maybe they're even ill and they're not telling you, right? And then they scratch yep. their like their nose or something, right? Uh huh. And then they shake your hand, and then you, uh, uh -huh. you know, uh, kind of touch your nose, and before you know it's, it, it's, it's all over. It's all over. You got the cold. It's all over, it, baby. It's yeah, not. You know, believe it. I go through the muscle aches, and I get through all stuffed up, and then I feel okay, but I can't taste or smell anything, and that sucks. And uh, until this week, I, I was stuffed up and couldn't smell or taste anything. Now I'm just stuffed up. You know, I can taste again. Hallelujah, I think I'll have a V8. People think you get it because somebody sneezes in your face. And by the way, people can sneeze in your face, and you might not get it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that, anything can happen. No, anything it, might not what, happen. what happens know. here? here is the technical part of it. If you then touch your nose... The little germ is right there. Now, it's you're, you haven't gotten it yet, but it travels up your mucous membrane, you know, of, the, of your nose. Uh -huh. And then once it gets past a certain point, it can then become a cold. So here's what people yeah. say to do. If you think you've been exposed to anything like that, take zinc. Zinc? And I the, like zinc. The, the, well, zinc stinks. If you eat, just take straight <laughs> zinc. But they have these zinc lozenges like coldies and things like that. Uh -huh. And that will prevent that germ from adhering to the mucous membrane. Ah, uh, I did not know that. See, they if I hadn't called zinc. you, if I had called you only two days ago, you or three days ago, you probably wouldn't have gotten sick. I wouldn't have gotten sick. In fact, I had this thing for like, it's like the 10th day so far. Oh, already. okay. If the I had older I get, the longer it takes to get over something. Well, so. if I had parted this information to you the last time we talked, how's that? Okay. Oh, if only then. If only I knew about zinc then. Ah, look at me now. What a fool I've been. So so, so you're you're over the cold, though? Yeah. I've been functioning and getting around and everything. I've just been, uh, you know, kind of dead from the neck up. But uh, today, um, today I can taste again. I thought, now, some you know, people, when they... You can't taste... Yeah, when some, oh, some, oh, go ahead, go ahead. yeah, no. Some people get colds. Okay, uh, yeah. they uh, they just take to bed. They just go to bed and lie there. I yeah. can't. I can't do that. I have to walk my cold off. I have to. I can't sit in bed. I get bored, so I got to get out and drive and walk and do yeah. things and see things and play on the internet and everything. So yeah, I think I'm today. I'm going to rest. Gee, dr today I do nothing. Driving? What is that exactly? I have no idea what driving is. Oh yeah, you're a New Yorker. It's this thing you get in and you sit in the chair and uh, with a little funny wheel in front of you, and then you press a couple of buttons, you turn a key, and before you know it, you're off to the races. See, see I, the I day I, is yours. I'd buy a car. But then I, it cost me the money for the car, so then there's the payment on the car, all right? 
Fuck that. You and don't then, that. You and then in that. New York, you got to find a parking place. So you usually uh, have to take. Right. You usually have to get a garage for five hundred dollars a month if you're lucky. Yeah, you don't need that. Who needs that? And That's then you have to pay the insurance. You don't need it. You have to pay the insurance. So by the time you're through, <laughs> you've put out about fifteen hundred bucks a month to have a car that you're not going to use. That's, that's right. You don't need one in New York, especially if you're going to stay around the city. Who the fuck needs it? No, no. Here you, in California, you go through the hills and the mountains and see the turkeys and the bears and everything. So I'll you tell you what you car. got. What you got is it's the best of the subways. You know, I used to take cab, I used to take cabs a lot, and uh, that that was fine when the traffic wasn't terrible, but now the traffic yeah. is continually terrible. So the reason yeah. I don't take a cab, number one, they, they, they are expensive, but, you know, I can uh, still, I'm not that broke that I can't afford one if I need one. But if you get on a subway, you're going to get to where you want to get to a hell of a lot faster than you would have true. had you taken a cab. No traffic jams underground, maybe an occasional cave-in, but no traffic jams. And once you once you get down on Fifth Avenue, down around oh, 56, 55, like 55th and 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 um, uh, and Fifth Avenue, uh, you've got Trump Tower, and that yeah. is a holy <laughs> exactly. hell traffic jam. Oh God, I can imagine. I can Used to be, you could zip right. right past there and look at this ugly building every day, but now. You can't do it. I mean, it's like, you know, nope. it, it's down to two lanes or something like that. And there are, oh. there are these barricades oh. and all this stuff. And he, this man is oh. this man is costing us a fucking fortune. Yep, but he's making America great again. It, it, America is, is it, it's grating on me. I don't know about you, but it's <laughs> making it, America, it, 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 America great, great again. again. That's what he meant. Yeah, it's it's uh, it, yeah. it's pretty pretty terrible. What's happening? Yeah, the world's yeah. gone batshit crazy. All I can do is sit here and play with myself. Yeah, but does it affect us? Uh not directly. You know, I always know the world's been batshit crazy. So you know, uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> when yeah, I was seven and they blew my president's brains out. I go, well, this is going to be an interesting ride. So yeah, but what, they haven't let me down since. Yeah, what's going to happen though uh, in the next couple of years? that he can fuck up so terribly that it's going to ruin your life. I mean... Uh, well, let's see, if a Korean bomb lands in my backyard, that would kind of hurt, put a crimp that, in my that day. That would put a crimp in your day. Also, if he, if he went after, uh, what do you call it? Uh, 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 the pot, uh, the pot uh, people. Uh, no, the pot people. The, no, the money pots, the Social Security. No, oh yeah, me. leave that alone. Leave that. Forget alone. about pot. And, pot is uh, pot is becoming so legal; it's ridiculous. You know. I know it's gonna. Uh, first, you can get it at the candy store, from what I hear. So yeah, it'll be interesting. Yeah, be nice if you got, got that those pot edibles. I can't do the edibles yeah. though. Do you do the edibles? Uh, I've done them, and they work on me half the time. When they work on me, they work beautifully. When they don't work on me, they just don't work on me. I but find... I, I'm into the wax now. Somebody try you try the wax. Ooh-wee. The what? It's wax. It's THC wax. It looks like earwax. It's a little yellow waxy thing. And you just dab a little in a pipe and bada ba boom you're off, you're off to the uh, race. Oh, I see. Okay, that's why it's called wax. Okay. Yeah, it is. It's some, I don't know how they do that and make it, but they make it. Oh, well, listen, kind of now, now, that, now that it's becoming legal, there's going to be all kinds of products and kinds of things and stuff like that. You know. Oh, they're already starting to do commercials. You know, try this kind of marijuana, make you feel good. Really? Where? Better than Brand X. Where are you? On the radio. I seen. I seen. Not on radio. On billboards. I seen some billboards. Of marijuana is coming. You know. So and, and, uh, they're, and, they're getting ready to start advertising. You, <laughs> you know why this is terrible? I mean, can I explain to you why it's terrible? There are all those guys. Okay. All those guys up in Mendocino with their little plantations that they they had in the backwoods. You know. Growing this yeah. stuff, and they became they, they became the uh, major suppliers here in the United States, I believe. Uh-huh. Uh, certainly, uh, it was California's number two crop, or maybe at one point number one crop. Uh, uh, and wow. and so all those little mom and pops were making money off of this because they ran their little plantations. And uh-huh. now those guys are going to get screwed. They're just going yeah. to get screwed because, you know, big business yep. is going to come in and they're going to take over the growing of this stuff. And these guys are yep. going to be shut out. And I think that when they yeah. made the law to legalize pot, they should have said, well, you're going to legalize pot, but you can't 
sell it com- uh, commercially or it can't you, the in other words it can't be grown commercially it has to be grown by uh-huh. individuals in other words yeah. allow it uh marijuana to be sold which has been grown by other people and and yeah. uh, they have to be private enterprises they can't be uh you know one of the major tobacco companies or whatever yeah. But, oh God. Yeah. But, but this is going to put R. those J. people. Reynolds. This is going to put those people out of uh, out of uh, an income, and that's well, kind of sad. Just, you know, they they let them work for the big companies, hire them on as farmers or growers or something. You yeah, know, but the, don't leave them by the side. Yeah, and then they get six ninety five an hour, and you know that, that's it. And they're know. lucky to get it. <laughs> you know, uh, because I mean, there. I I don't know if you've ever if you've spent much time in Mendocino, but I had a friend who lived up there. And she worked for uh-huh. a doctor who turned out, gave out marijuana recommendations, uh-huh. you know, so uh, that you yeah. could buy it from these uh, far, uh, these uh, dispensaries. And yeah. uh, he uh, he took me up to his apartment, which was above his office, and he turned he just gave me some of the local local stuff, and I got, never got so bombed in my fucking life. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I okay. was, I was. Uh, I was going. Oh, it was amazing stuff, and so these people <laughs> up there learned how to grow amazing pot. And I don't know oh, yeah. if they're not going to be put out of out of work after a while, you know? Mm. Uh, yeah, because because the, once like when prohibition ended, the bootleggers were put out of business. But right the, now, I think the there's I, I think they're still making a living off of it uh, because the big uh, companies haven't come into it yet, but they're going to. You know. Yeah, sure. Do you think Brown and Williamson are going to sit by while someone else is selling a leaf product? You know. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, all I care is if I get mine. I'm a selfish bastard. Yeah. Just give me mine. So anyway, do you watch? Uh, do you watch any TV this year? I've been... Not much. Not much. I've been meaning to watch the Ken Burns Vietnam thing because everybody's talking about it. But no, I don't really. We don't even. We, I watch. We don't watch TV at all. I watch YouTube, but that's it. I watched the first episode of Kim Burns' thing, and we never went back and uh-huh. watched part two. Uh, uh-huh. because, oh, well, part of the reason being, we've been there, done that, you know? I mean, I wasn't... I remember. I never. I wasn't there, but I remember the era. Yeah, I mean, when he did the Civil War, we weren't around for the Civil War. So this is very interesting, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, and uh, when he did Prohibition... Um, uh, based on somebody else's book, but it 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 was just a great documentary on prohibition uh, because you weren't there at the time. But exactly. you know, to yeah. relive Vietnam microscopically to begin with, we know half this stuff already, and uh, you know it was okay. It's okay if he wants to document it, so you have a documentation yeah. of it. But yeah. I don't know if I want to sit around and watch that war again. I mean, it was a miserable fucking war, and um, yeah, you know, it it made lives a living hell in this country. Sure, and it divided sure. divided Guys, this country. So, hey. you know, I I I'll probably get around to watching the rest of them. But there are ten episodes, and they're all about an hour and a half each. And I just don't yeah. know if I'm if I'm ready to to face. Vietnam all over that's, again in my yeah, living. That's all, yeah, exactly. I rather watch the one on jazz. That one made me happy. That was good. Now you see, I mean, jazz, he, baseball. His thing on baseball was made Baseball was real good. Civil War was good. Yeah. So you know, uh, but why he t- chose Vietnam, I have oh. no idea. You know, it just yeah, I, yeah. Who knows? It, generation it, doesn't know anything well, about he, it, he may have felt it had to be done, and I agree with him. It had to be done. It doesn't mean I have to watch it. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> so you, Fair enough. I'll buy that. So you don't watch all the other stuff on TV. You don't watch. Uh, I don't. I don't know what's on. I couldn't name you one celebrity if I bumped into him on a fucking skateboard. I don't know what's going on. Yeah. TV wise. Oh, really? So you just, I, you don't even yeah, take it in nothing. at all. You, didn't see the nope, new- zero. We we didn't we didn't have TV anymore. We just have uh, the internet. Yeah, so but- uh, we just uh, after after Letterman went off, I go well. I hung on for another year, and I go okay. There's nothing I want to see at all on TV. It's nothing, zero. And Nina said, "No, there's nothing I give a shit about either." So we got rid of it. Well, TV quite is, liberating. The question is 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 cable and are the pay TV networks TV? Uh-huh. Do you consider that TV? It's any, well, anything on that screen is TV, but most of it's garbage. So uh, this is 
thing I want to see, I can watch on YouTube. They just, well, there's channels now that show the Tonight Show, and they can see Car 54 and all these other. Well, they're all on YouTube. I can watch anyone. I can watch any Jack Benny program I want. Yeah. I can listen to any radio show I want. I just there's nothing on TV I give a shit about at the moment. So you can probably there's find find zero. Old, you can probably find old shows with me on it somewhere. You know. Yeah, yeah, you're, I'm sure if I, if I put your name on YouTube, I'm sure many things will pop oh, up. Many things do pop up, and sometimes I've gone, where did they find that? You know, yeah, I don't yeah. I don't even have a copy of that. It, it's insane. I don't have, even have a copy of that. I do now, but I didn't have a copy of that. Yeah. You know. It's, I don't know where to find them, but everything everything is on Earth and put up on YouTube. Yep. God bless the mighty Internet. Well, I mean, I like this show tonight will be on YouTube. You know. There you go. There you go. And uh, it'll all, it'll paper. also be on Facebook Live. Uh, it'll also be oh, on my really? Facebook page. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we don't show you because you don't have a camera and you don't have, you well, know, a way that we someday, can't. Someday, someday I'll get one. The way we can't. Over you don't have Christmas. a you don't have a camera with your computer at all. Uh, no, no camera. We got an old time now. We don't even use the desktop anymore. We got stuff on our phones, and the phone has a camera, but I don't know. And the, I probably have Skype, well, we, but I don't know how to use it. Uh, well, we could probably, yeah. Well, you see, that that's the problem. But we get step pro- by step. Walk me through it. What, what, what kind of phone? Thing. What kind of phone do you have? Let me look at it here. It's a Samsung. That's what it is. Oh, it's a Samsung. Okay, so I, I was yeah. saying we could do oh, it. Yeah. The way you said that, oh, oh it's Samsung. Well, no, no, good luck to you. No, if it were an Apple, I could. <laughs> we could do. We could do it through FaceTime. You know. Aha. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. I think I used Skype on this thing once, and I know my friend Tomayo, who was in Japan, called me from there on the video thing, and we spoke. Yeah. So this, this is capable. I just got to figure out how. I'm so bad. Last time I tried to upload something, I started a war with Malta. I'm not good with these things. You're terrible with them, I assume. Terrible. I tried to download something. I accidentally burned a synagogue to the ground. But I'm boom. But I got to tell you. Yeah, so do you, you have, then, a Skype address, I would imagine? It's probably uh, there's a million apps on here. I haven't, I haven't even looked at. No, I but know, I mean, thing, you probably have an, you probably have an address for Skype. Yeah, I could probably you know, if, I, if I don't have Skype, I'm sure it's uh, I can put it on this thing somehow. Yeah, well, we so should do it sometime because fucking, what I do oh, now with, mo- oh, with a lot of guests like Durst, I do video on, and uh, I did Penn Gillette a couple of days ago, and I did him on Skype, and I did uh, Rob Schneider on Skype. Uh, and, uh, well, Snyder's got all the modern equipment. You do Bubbles. He's still got a clam top phone. Oh, 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 oh he, it is. It is. I mean, Bubbles has... He does his from a phone booth somewhere in Fremont. <laughs> Bu- Bubbles is the ultimate Luddite, you know. Oh, yeah. I mean, sure. I'm, I'm the lu- ultimate holdout. I'm lucky that when I call him, he knows how to answer the phone. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Takes him 10 minutes, but he gets... He gets to it. He gets to it. He gets to it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but uh, no. So you don't. You don't watch TV. Do you go to the movies? Nope. Do you go to the movies? No, I haven't been to the last movie I saw in the theater was Gangs of New York in 2002. No kidding. About, <laughs> Wait a minute. You I haven't. I'm the dullest son of a bitch. I don't go out. I don't do nothing. I do shows here and there. Wait a minute. Now doesn't uh, doesn't your uh, are I'm you home a lot. is it your girlfriend or your wife? I forget now. It's your girlfriend. That don't matter. What's Th- it doesn't matter. Your, your wife. Your my s- wife, my mistress, my girlfriend, my guitar, it doesn't matter. Yeah, she's my, she's my sister, she's my, anyway. My sister, she's my cousin, she's uh, mellow, she's yellow. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so how does she feel about not going to the movies? She doesn't like going anywhere either. <laughs> she's worse than me. She, she's, she's home a lot unless she goes to a friend's house or something. We are so really? dull. Really? Son go where? Do what? Where am I going to go? What am I going to do? You, so you I have ha- to see friends once in a while. I, uh, I do shows once in a while. I can't go see Johnny Winter no more, so uh, I stay home. Okay, so the only thing you probably do is listen to music, right? Well, I listen to music. I watch old TV shows. I watch uh, on the internet. I'm bu- very busy. I do lots of things on there, and... Uh, I take my little walks. I take my exercise walks every day. I like to drive around. I hey, I call up Mike Pritchard. What are you doing in Marin? Okay, I'll come over and see you. Hey, how you doing? Okay, see you later. Well, you, 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 see, guy, like, you see Mike Pritchard regularly? I can't imagine you with Mike Pritchard. Not regularly, but no, we, we laugh, we joke, we do this, we do that. Then he tries to save me, and I run away. Yeah, that, that's the part I get. Because in case people don't know, Mike Pritchard... Uh, there's a photograph of me, and in the picture is Jerry Seinfeld, <laughs> Kevin Pollack, Dana Carvey, Robin Williams, and then I'm standing <laughs> next to some guy who I'm looking at, if you ever see the picture. Yeah. 
And that guy yep. is Michael Pritchard, and he's always the one that every time people look at that picture, you go, who's he? Uh, who's he, the big guy, very yeah. big guy. But he was a comedian, and then he became a uh, a born-again Christian or something. I don't know. He's, something like that. For, yeah, for, for, I know he's uh, on the anti-bully crusade. Which yeah, good, and, and uh, you know, I mean, he wants to be a sweet guy. He's kind of, I don't know, was he ever an alcoholic? Because a lot of times... Oh, yeah, he's right. Yeah, I when, remember. Oh. When, when people are alcoholics and then they reform, they, like, get this whole religious thing going, you know. <laughs> they, go the, they go too far the other way. But he's, a, he's a, you know, he's a sweet guy. He's a decent guy. But, Great guy. boy, he I can... I, I remember I was at... Uh, we were doing a thing in Union Square in which uh, 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 a lot of people from radio stations and comedy and so on... We're in Union Square, and we were singing Christmas carols, okay? And I'm fine with most Christmas carols as a Jew until you get to the religious yeah. ones, okay? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and they sang, uh, started singing Silent Night. So I'm standing next mm -hmm. to Pritchard, and he's going, Silent night, holy <laughs> night. And uh, he, he and looks at me, and he notices I'm not singing. Because I know when it comes to round yon virgin, mother and child, uh, I'm going to lose my Jew credentials, okay? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm not singing this particular song. I'm kind of humming and you know, hemming and hawing. And he looks over at me and he says, come on, Alex, couldn't hurt. And I looked back at him and I said, <laughs> and I looked at Pritchard and I said, hey, Mike, have a drink. Couldn't hurt. Yeah. <laughs> And he then, shut up quickly. He, he did. He did. He shut up very quickly. Very quickly. But so I heard. I heard, and I don't know if this is a true story. So, Michael, if you're listening to this and it isn't true, please get a hold of me. But I heard that he was at a children's hospital with kids who were dying, <clears throat> and I think maybe he was dressed up as a clown. Okay. Yeah. Uh, now, on the surface of this, it's a nice thing he did. It's it's yeah. so good and so nice. It's not the kind of thing I would do because I'm an asshole. Okay, that's how yeah. good he was. Mm -hmm. Except he then, with this big clown face, looks down at the kid and goes, "So how do you feel about meeting Christ?" No, oh, no, that, oh, I that, refuse to believe that. The, 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 I I swear to you, I heard the story secondhand from somebody who was there okay. and said he couldn't believe him <laughs> saying that to the kid. Honey, you're going to be meeting Christ right. soon. Uh, yeah, right. I was like Jerry Lewis wheeling out one of his kids. This kid is going to be dead soon. Won't you help? Whoa. Oh, that makes the kid feel good, Jerry. Did you hear That's the a good thing. It's you, a real good thing. You hear that Jerry didn't leave any money to his kids? Yeah. Nah. <laughs> what a dick. Maybe the kids were dicks, too. It was like Bing Crosby and his first set of kids. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll Bing. beat on those boys with a baseball bat till they bled. Now they're going to work on Burbank Boulevard. Yes. Yeah, so what, what do you call uh, one of the kids? Uh, bubble butt? Bucket butt. Buc Birdie, get the ball, bucket butt. Ball. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> get the ball, ball. I'm not leaving you any boo boo. <laughs> God damn it. These are, these yeah. are the celebrities. These what? are the stars. Yeah, well, the, you know what's interesting is a guy like Crosby was like America's friend. Everybody loved mm -hmm. Bing so Crosby. Nobody disliked Bing Crosby. And yet Bing no, Crosby was a, was, <laughs> was a fucking asshole to his family. And isn't that the core of what, right. some, of what somebody is? You know? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, he was a real asshole who was kids and everything. Yeah. So. And uh, then again, there's Bill Cosby, America's dad, you know? <laughs> Ooh. America's dad. Here, have a roofie. Uh, oh, God. <laughs> have some sleepy time cello now with quaaludes and roofies and checking all and two and all for the raping and the accusing and the denying and the running. Well, I mean, the the... the, the 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 a good question would be: Do you believe all the stories about Cosby, or do you think that uh, there's, some of them have got to be true? Okay, you yeah. can't have oh, yeah. that many oh, women yeah. come I, forward. Enough of, them, enough of them were true, I would say. Yeah, enough of them. If one of them was true, then that would be yeah. enough to say, "Prick," you know, you you yeah, low life, like, right? Um, yes, if Hitler killed two Jews, that would suck too. But I don't believe I, I don't believe all of them. 
you know. Uh, oh, I'm sure some you know, little little Hollywood starlet whores are coming there for it. Oh, he did me too. Yeah. He did me too. Just to right. get their names. I'm sure not all of them are true, but uh, you know, I'm sure and they a all, lot of them are. You know, they uh, all, sounded in truth. So. And they all have the same lawyer, either Lisa Bloom or her mother, Gloria yeah. Gloria Allred. You know. Oh yeah. Oh, look out for her. Look out for her. Hey, I just looked at the clock, and we've run out of time on this deal. Oh, well, before you know it, see, time flies when you talk about all kinds of shit. And when you're having fun and things like that. When you're having a big time fun. Yep. 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 Anyway, I want to uh, say goodbye to you, and we'll see you in a, in a couple of weeks. Okay. Sounds good to me, my friend. Let I will make myself available for you anytime, Godfather. L- ladies and gentlemen, it's Stephen Pearl. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, here we are, folks. Here we are. Here we are. Here we are. We're here. We're here. And we're here. Let me open up uh, Skype here, just to because people call us using Skype, folks. And in case you say, well, "How come you're not looking at us when when you're talking?" Well, the reason is the camera's up here, and all the stuff I'm doing is down here. So. Let me do that, then you can see my face as I do this. Let me turn on uh, Skype and see if anybody wants to call me tonight. Nah, probably nobody, right? You know, but we'll we'll see. We'll see. We're we're sitting here waiting uh, for people to call. Uh, um, uh, by the way, uh, uh, do I want to talk about it now? Yeah. I've been uh, working. I've been working on changing the uh, the website, and I've completely changed it uh, because what I wanted to do was make it as terse as possible. So I'm crammed in a whole bunch of information on one page, and the other object of doing this was to not make it look uh, as though it was uh, um, crammed with stuff. It, I didn't want it to look, to look cluttered. So I, if you go and look at it, it's so uncluttered that I have this whole trough down the middle of the page with nothing on it, and I can't figure out anything to put on it because everything you want to know, every place you want to go that there is GabNet, you can get to from that page. So I, I don't know what to, what to say and what to do. But, you know, we'll... Uh, uh, let me uh, let me also look at a few other things here. Uh, we'll uh, we'll, we'll uh, so we'll be uh, you know hopefully uh, it'll all be uh, uh, pretty good. But I can't figure out what to put in the middle, so I put a big sign up there that said I don't know what to put in here with all the space. And I'm I, I was trying to think of maybe a chat room, uh, but then I looked at different programs and they were all too confusing to me. You know, it wasn't just something I could drag and drop into it. And this uh, thing I use to do it with doesn't have, doesn't even have a thing where I can set up, they have a whole, they have things where I can put the time up and the date and have it say good morning when it's morning and so on, but it doesn't have anything that I can do personally where I can uh, uh, put in a, something that says contact me, you know? So anyway, oh, look who's here. Look who's there. Right there. Right there. Right in your face. There he is. Phil Meyer. Hi, Phil. Hey, how you doing? Yeah, you, you like the new uh, website? Yeah, I like the especially like the part that says, "What am I going to put here?" <laughs> I have no idea <laughs> what to put in there. I, I literally, uh, I took everything. You know, all I the froze. things I used to have the little animations for each show that I would put up for like a week at a time. I now have them rotating yeah. on a platform up at the very top, so they they're constantly rotating. And over on the right hand side, I have the video from last night's show, and then I have all these little buttons for you to go to all the various things. And then on one side is the on demand, and on the other side, it tells all the stuff on how to use uh, um, uh, Skype and to get on the show. And <laughs> that was it. I don't need any more than that. Right? Yeah. Can you lower the opacity on the flag? Why? Uh, it's too bright. I don't like. I don't like. I like it the way it is. What do you mean it's too bright? What kind of machine are you looking at it on? I'm, I'm looking at it. And if anybody else, anybody else think it's too bright? Too no. bright, and it makes me no. dizzy. It's not. It's not bright. It makes you more dizzier than that waving flag. This is a very uh, smooth kind of thing going on. Uh, it's, it's just. It's too constant. 
Well, it's constant if you're watching it all the time, yes, because it is constant. Well, you start staring at it, and then all of a sudden you get hypnotized. You know what he? You know what he's griping about? He's griping about this. He's griping about that graphic, okay, which is on the site as well, okay. Uh, You know, not looking at the feed. Well, you're not looking at the feed, but it's it is the the no no the Facebook feed. Yeah, yeah, it is the very thing that yeah. So anyway, that's that's what he's griping about, folks. What are you griping (laughs) about that for? There's no reason to grab yes. that, huh? Yes, I told you I like the uh, I like the area that says uh, what am I going to put here? Y- oh, but- oh, that that th- 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 yeah, where there's nothing you <laughs> like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Are you going to co- continue complaining about uh, about my about my little website? I mean, I think I, it's uh, to begin with. I wanted to stop it from looking cluttered. Remember, I had all those pictures of all the shows and everything. That's like gone. It. No, but that was just cluttered. It looked cluttered. This is clean. This is a nice, uh, clean page where I have nothing left to say, so I have this blank trough down the middle of it. Well, you, you know, I, I like the uh, the thing you did with the rotating shows. Maybe that could actually be go across the entire top, uh, all the way across. No, almost can't. Like, uh, oh, like one of those news uh, 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 crawls. Uh, but have it at the top, and then stick the other things uh, in. That in sounds. The that area. sounds horrible. That's terrible. That's terrible design. You think so? Oh, it's horrible design. Yeah, I have one way I could have done it. Instead of them like being up there, and then they change. There's a thing called scroll where I can just have them float across the page, right. one right after the other. But but it goes by too fast, and you can't get the information to people. That's oh, the you problem. Oh, you can slow it down? You can slow it down, but what you're doing is you're slowing it down, and yet uh, even if you slow it down a lot, at a certain point, you start losing half of whatever there is in one, and you're getting the half of what there is in the other, and it just uh. didn't work. So I, I, I went to the format that it's on now. I like the way it looks. Uh, mm-hmm. Mike, well, you don't look at my website, do you? Yes, I do. Well, you do, really. Uh, you like? Yeah, you know, you could put your pictures of uh, your trip to the island. What? I, no, it's, this isn't a travel site, and it's not a. Well, uh, it's not. But Alex just Bennett, tell me you like you like the part that says, "What am I going to put here?" It's a Gabnet site, and it's you not. An, it's say not under construction. It's not an Alex Bennett site. It's a Gabnet site. I wish I had more videos of the other shows, but nobody else is doing the video thing that I'm doing. So uh, you know, uh, that's that's the problem. So you know, uh, can, can they do the video thing that you're doing? They could. Well, I mean, they could do it, but uh, well, don't, don't ask Jack to do it. Forget <laughs> that. that. That's. <laughs> Well, you, know. you see, I would have liked, you know those buttons that you had, the show buttons that were at the top, but they weren't really buttons. It would have been nice if you could click on it and then listen to their feed or their show, uh, you know, you and uh, it, recorded you, the way. Yeah, but you can do that anyway. You go over to the on-demand, click on one of, on their name, and it plays. Right. That's for a specific show. But just just a uh, a rotation of that's uh, called the twenty four seven feed, which is what plays when you first come to the site. The stand the, that's that's okay. So just what their it, shows? It, what? Just their shows. Oh, not, not the twenty four seven feed. See the twenty four seven. You got it all mixed together. Oh, you mean I'm supposed to have one but one one channel that repeats twenty four seven? Why can't you, people can just go to the on demand and play so anybody's show they want to listen to? Sure they, Sure, they could have. I I just thought the buttons would have been interesting if they were the on-demand thing. Well, it's almost the same as a button, and that would be too hard for me to do, and too much work. God knows it does. I do enough work posting those fucking shows. I'm so sick of that. I can't stand it anymore. Yeah, they look good. Uh, Hey, uh, let's see. There was a ton of stuff to talk about, and I can't remember any. Oh. Uh, if the gunman in Las Vegas, mm-hmm. there we go. they had him, uh, they talked to his hairdresser, and, uh, and you know, I think that we should spread the story that he actually listened to GabNet when he wasn't gambling, and uh, maybe it would bring in more listeners. Oh, yeah. 
Oh, yeah. Boy, you're, you, you, you've got all kinds of bad ideas. Let's right. see here. No. Boy, it, it's like the stock market. All you got to do is yeah. whatever I get involved with, do the opposite. Yeah. If, Tim, Tim, if, Tim, I, don't make Tim, money. Tim has joined us. Hello, Tim. How are you? Yeah, I want to talk about the shooter, too. You want to talk about the ready. shooter, too? I, haven't we had enough with that fucking shooter? You know? But no, my only, my only point is it doesn't add up. Nothing makes sense. Nothing. It's something. Something's wrong. Something's wrong. Well, it, it, it's, I don't know. Maybe there's nothing wrong. Maybe this guy. Is, maybe that's the way this guy was, and he just went off the deep end and did what he did. Uh, the, the hotel says that he complained about uh, the uh, the night before or two nights before. He complained about somebody in a room playing country music uh, uh, in the next room or the room below him. And, uh, and he said it was too loud, and he was uh, he was upset by it. Well, uh, wouldn't you there, be if if the room next to you was too loud? It wasn't real country music. <laughs> yeah, really. Uh, well, anyway, uh, you know, they're saying that that was one of his complaints, but uh, they're also there, a number of people are uh, they bring in these experts, and they're saying that maybe he had to have had an accomplice. He had to have someone help him. And, you know, I thought that the guy got set up, you know, that they, somebody used him as a patsy. And uh, I, think, I think he was, I, I think it has elements of maybe he was being blackmailed, even either physically or monetarily. I think maybe more, somebody somewhere was, because he, he dealt with a lot of money, a lot of real estate. I don't know. It didn't sound it like, just seems like, like he was, uh, that somebody was putting him up to it almost. Yeah, it didn't sound like he really gave a damn about other people, but I, you know, uh, people have uh, weird proclivities, I guess. Everybody's yeah, a, he every, under, every, he every, 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 everybody's a Miss Marple. <laughs> you know, everybody is a detective, and you've got the suspicions. You know, it could be this guy just did what he did, and that was it. You know, oh, that's that, possible. But you know, I mean, I'm one, I'm one of those. Like, I'm one of those. Woke up in the middle of the night screaming. I'm one of those Why? people that, uh, to this day, says I believe Oswald did it. Yeah. You know, oh. and 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 people go, oh, you have this bullet going this way, and they came. And, yeah, how could he get him the shots? Hey, it was a fluke. He did it, and it ha and it worked. The same the same thing that happened when they took those planes and said we're going to fly them into the World Trade Center. They didn't think it was actually going to happen, but it yeah. happened. You know, I'd like to buy corner of the market on those bump stocks that that the guy used. You know, they now they want to take them uh, off the market, and uh, uh, the Republicans are agreeing with the Democrats. And, and the NRA and, is calling for them to be. Yeah, and uh, but you know, they, they, but they you seem can, pretty. Can, I don't make, own. The, you can make those though. You can have those made easily on the black market, so that's not going to stop people from getting them. Yeah, well, and it doesn't stop people on the black market from getting fully automatic uh, parts to make fully automatic guns either, but they, they do. No, uh, but, and we, we actually had a sheriff arrested for having machine guns. They put him in the prison for eight straight years. Why? And wait a minute. I had I had fully automatic uh, weapons available to me uh, when I was in the police department, and uh, I could take them home. When I, when I was on the boat, I had a, a fully automatic uh, Colt uh, uh, rifle that we kept on the boat. Uh, well, we put it back in the armory at night, but you know. they weren't following the federal law. They just thought they should be allowed to have them. And they, they oh, them oh, away. okay. So this was just they bought it illegally. Right, and people kind of knew it. They were kind of flaunting it, and they yeah. came down pretty hard on him. Well, but yeah. I don't know. I, I'm going to throw one thing out, then I won't say anything the rest of the night. No, and I, uh, I, you don't have to did, keep quiet for the rest of the night just okay. because you decided. Did anybody see the story about the NRA meeting with Russia before the election, <laughs> and then the NRA donating thirty million? And now I'll shut up. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a true story. It's just what do you make of it? I haven't read any more details. It's a true story. It's a true story. Yeah. How, you probably read it on Facebook. Mm. I'll, I'll post it on Facebook. Yeah. Mm. Where uh, is, right. where is everybody tonight? This is last night. You were, you weren't even here last night, and we had a royal flush. 
I know. Well, uh, what happened was, as I'm coming home, I'm listening to you uh, coming, and I'm coming back from my friend's place in Richmond, or El Sobrani, and uh, uh, you had 10, and then by the time uh, I pulled into my driveway, uh, you had 11, so I said, well, that's the end of that. <laughs> yeah, well, you should have called tonight. Oh, wait a minute, you did. So. Yeah, uh, yeah, unfortunately, I did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, you know. Um, uh, gee, I have nothing to talk about. So we yeah. just call the show quits because nobody's calling. Well, except I'd like I'd like you to. I'm getting a new phone system at work, mm -hmm. and uh, I they told me that it's you can have these wave files uh, to uh, for all your outgoing stuff. You know, somebody calls, hey, thank you for calling. You've reached. You know, for for uh, for Phil push eleven. You know, that kind of thing. Uh, you want to do it? What? Uh, I'll give you the scripts, and uh, you'll be the uh, the voice of Carpet One. Oh, sure. I'd be happy to be the voice of Carpet One, at least. How much am I getting paid for this? Well, I'll work something out with you'll you. You'll work something out. Carpet. I'll get carpet in, in an apartment where I don't want, a, I don't want carpet. What carpet. Uh, yeah, yeah, maybe I'll give you a microphone. Oh, oh no. Yeah. I mean, I, I'd be happy to do it anyway. Okay? I know. Okay. Uh, but here's here's what I suggest. Here's what I did on my phone once on my answering machine. Yeah. I said, you've called Bennett Communications. To yeah. talk to Alex, press 1. To talk to so-and-so, press 2. To talk right. to so-and-so, press 3. To so-and-so, press 4. Now, it didn't matter. I It was nothing to press. It's just that whatever button they pressed, you know. <laughs> it went to the same place. It went to the same place, yeah. yeah. Well... Um, you know, so I. But they I, all I, believed it. It sounded like I had a big business going. Yeah. Well, I hypothesized. You know, and I said to myself, "Well, uh, thank you for calling, Carpet One. This is this is Alex Bennett. And if you want to talk to Phil, press." <laughs> so, nah, well, you don't have to mention your name. Thank though. you for calling. What Carpet One? Yeah. Where, so why, uh, how'd you come up with that name? I joined a, a buying group, and there's a thousand stores uh, across the world that uh, belong to this group, and that's that's the thing. And I and I figured, uh, oh, that's the name. I, so you're almost like it almost sounds like you're a franchise, the local franchise, right, like an Ace Hardware or something like that. Uh, but um, I was too cheap. I didn't want to pay for the customization of all the documents, like uh, the brochures and everything. So yeah. I could just get a generic brochure that said Carpet One on it, and it worked for me. So, <laughs> so I didn't have to pay the setup charge to have them put in, you know, Billy Bob's Carpet One. Mike, you were giving it a, like, oh, no. What, what was that look for? I could just see you, Alex, doing his asterisk service. <laughs> And all of a sudden, if, if you don't like it, kiss my ass. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, uh, oh, the other thing is, uh, beyond that, you know, Mike, I, I've wondered, uh, you were a, you're a ham operator, you do a lot of stuff, but we don't really, and we don't know anything, we know you got a mother, but we don't know anything about you. Why don't you tell us what, well, what everybody your Everybody has a mother. Yeah, were, were you in, you know, were you actually employed by people and, and, and do something, or... You know, have you no. always been sitting in your chair smoking? Because if somebody had told me that you'd gone up to the Mandalay Bay and set up a whole bunch of guns <laughs> and shot into a crowd, I I like believe I oh, believe it. Bullshit! Bill, you're full of shit. Like you, Bill, he you're looks a little like that guy. Yeah. Everybody. Yeah. What did you do for a living? I worked for my dad's uh, fishing company, buying and selling fish for 30 some odd years no, I had an ex-girlfriend she and her husband started a uh, fish selling business down at Fisherman's Wharf uh, so, really? yeah they, they had a, a uh, company that uh, they were fish wholesalers right yeah. that's what we is that like yeah. a fish monger? no a, well I, no. I used to call I used to I had a name for her I called her fish princess yeah, and, and 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 so everybody thought that the reason I called her fish fish princess was some kind of sexual odor thing that I was uh, referring to, but I wasn't. I called her fish princess because she was the princess do fish, you know. So uh, my dad he started uh, working for the company after World War II back in 1947. And when I got out of high school, just hey, you want to go to work for the company? And sure. 
that was back in 73 and I retired back nine 2005 when I retired mm -hmm. so my dad's still alive he's 96 my mom's around 80 something so you know they've been married for a long long time and happy to lucky dad he just does his New York Times cross, uh, crossword puzzle. I do, I do, I do it every day. I, I do. I, I actually have it on my computer, and I and I I do all the Mondays. I've Monday gone, is I'm every day. I, I'm back to 2005 on the Mondays. Oh, every day. You know, I I I've done it so that I've done Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I think I did once was because each day they get rougher. And Saturday, yeah. forget it. I'm not even trying. Sunday is a big puzzle, but it's not necessarily hard. Okay, but it's big. It has more squares. Mm. So. But listen to my dad argue with the New York Times crossword puzzle. Oh, son of a bitches! They can't spell that word right. I spelled that word right. It still doesn't fit. Those assholes. I want to call the New York Times. I go, go ahead. Start a war with New York Times. Well, I do. It, I do it with a computer where I can, like, oh. instead of erasing it, and you, you know, you, I just, you know, do away. He's, with. he's good though. He's good at that. Yeah, I do it on my iPad every time I t go to the bathroom, t hit the hit the can. I do. I do my New York Times crossword puzzle, and I I've got the Mondays. I've got down to about sixteen minutes, wow. which is pretty good. Uh, but you know, I, and I've done I've done Tuesday, and then I've done Wednesday, and I've and then I, I've eked my way through a Thursday, and then a Friday. I don't know if I ever got a Friday done. They they're rough. They get rough. But the yeah. th the thing is that you get to know the guy that does the puzzles and, and his sensibilities, and so you can kind of predict certain things that he you know that that he wants as the answer. So ah, here comes Jeff Stein. I can figure out what letters Vanna White's going to turn over, too. Y really? Oh, good. Yeah. No, but the thing is, hi, hi uh, there, uh, Jeff. Um, hey, uh, it, it, um, uh, he, he He's predictable. In fact, when I do, like, a whole month's worth of Mondays, I'll find that in that month he's used the same word a couple of times with a different kind of clue each time. So, but... Oh. Yeah. Go ahead, Alex. Hey, I feel I posted that on Facebook on uh, on the oh. messages and a couple other stories out there. Yeah. All right, they, uh, he's talking about our Facebook page where we have uh, uh, our our so-called panel here of four. Now, Phil, uh, you were saying about the fish uh, monger. Yeah. You know, I, I you can tell a good fish doesn't cold. stink. That's one. <laughs> you, know, you look at the eyes of the fish. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have a clear eye. Don't even buy that fish. If it's cloudy, don't even buy it. That's old. What? He, you, don't, you don't you don't want just because a fish has cataracts, you don't want to buy it. He's an no, eight. That's, <laughs> no, no, seriously, because that fish is old or has been sick. By the way, well, I, I wonder where they, Rob. I wonder where Rob Alfano is this week. He hasn't been on all week long. I hope Maybe it's getting moved in, putting stuff away. Yeah, it could be. Uh, we miss you if you're listening, Rob. So uh, maybe I'll write him after the show and see where he's been. Because I, I figured eventually there'd be a week where we wouldn't hear much from him because he's got to get all this stuff done. Uh, yeah. It could also be that he's out doing business and things like that. Yeah. Well, oftentimes, even if he was, he calls. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hey, know. what's... And what's Jack Bishop going to do? They're going to get a hurricane headed that way, aren't they? Yeah. By the way, I got to tell uh, either Jack or in fact, I got to write both of them. I'm going to. I'm going to first. I'm going to write uh, um, uh, Damien because Damien said uh, when I went away on vacation last time, if you want me to do the show, I'll be happy to. And I said, well, Jack's already going to do it. So I told him I would l let him know the next time I was going to go on vacation and let him have an opportunity to do it. But if he doesn't, then I'll have Jack do it. And if neither of them want to do it, you'll have blank air here, you know. So uh, maybe so Rob will do it. So I had a guy staying here the last couple of nights uh, who I I put up every now and then because he's in the radio business and uh, um, he uh, you know he just like a lot of people in the radio business uh, is has fallen on somewhat hard times. So he has to come to New York to do business every now and then. And, 
I've I've uh, I've put them up here. Uh, it's uh, it's just been a, th a thing I've done. And uh, but uh, this morning I was talking to him. And he, first of all, he said something very nice. He said I was listening to you last night because I could hear you through the door. He <laughs> said you're the still the best there is in the business. <laughs> he said you are. He says it's just a shame you're not working. And I said well, I don't. There's no work out there. And he said. And this will be chilling. He says, do you know the radio business has lost since 2008 60,000 jobs? Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I believe it. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, that made me feel real good. Uh, <laughs> you know, I mean. You know, I wouldn't, take, me I wouldn't take that with a grain of salt because Tillerson said uh, Trump was a smart, a smart guy, too, so. Tillerson, I thought he called him a moron. No, no, no. In his mea culpa, oh. he actually said that Trump's smart. Trump's really smart. He probably uh, is. But you know, that's why General Kelly didn't come to Vegas with Trump. He stayed back to take uh, Tillerson to the woodshed. Because uh, Trump gets really upset over these little things. Uh, Trump is... Uh, things Trump, that Tillerson calls it petty, but Trump gets upset. I think disloyalty is a, is a very bad thing. And, uh, you know, if you're going to work for somebody, you, you're either loyal or you're out. Well, you don't need an answer. Well, that's if they're sane, if they're sane, Phil. Yeah, well, you see, you know, when people bitch and... and, and uh, no, no, construct, not, he's not bitching. He's, he just has a different opinion on policy. He's not bitching about Trump. Oh, well, let me say, let me let smart. me say hello to somebody who just said hello on the uh, on the Facebook page. David Schmidt. Hi, David. How are you? We miss you. Come to New York yeah. again soon, or we'll come out there and see you. Anyway, go ahead. It's a friend of mine worked used to work at Pixar, oh. and they retired uh, from Pixar. Tim, you were saying something. Uh, I I oh. was just going to say that you know. Your business, you're responsible. It, it's your brand, so to speak, and yeah. and you can consider that that Trump is the president of his company now. But yeah. the reality is, it's not his company. It's our company. Doesn't right? matter. It's, you got a right to bitch. Yeah. You got you, you got you a, have a right to bitch, but he doesn't have the right to assume. You see, he doesn't understand he's an employee. He just yes. doesn't understand that the simple people, fact of life. The people that work for uh, the government, and, and that means him because he's the head of it, uh, need to uh, be focused on accomplishing the goals but can you imagine, of what he's elected can you, can you imagine something, though, Phil? Can you imagine, would you want to work for Donald Trump? I mean, look at the way he's handling these people. How many has he fired so far? You know, a life with Trump in business must have been a living hell for the people well, working think, with him. Think about it. Now, I'm not as good at, as, it, as Tim, for instance, at uh, knowing all the little nuances of why this one was fired and that one was fired. But think about it. The first guy, Flynn. Uh, Flynn was uh, w was a bad guy. He wasn't doing things that was... But uh, he chose him. He chose him. He chose him, but you know when you're trying to put together a government and you're being uh, uh, you're you're being fought a, a tooth and nail uh, that your appointees are are being uh, uh, delayed. Uh, yes, he chose him, and on the outside, Flynn looked like a great guy, but then his son uh, s uh, started showing up uh, with uh, some negative things. So some people are good at hiding stuff. He was obviously vetted by somebody. Maybe it was Chris Christie that screwed up because he wasn't he doing the Why vetting? Why don't you look? Look, but, but, you, you but remember the Truman anymore. Truman had a had a had a it's saying true. on his desk, and it simply right. read, "The buck stops here," okay. and that should be what we what we have to say about Trump. The buck should stop there. If it should, if there is a problem, if Flynn was a problem, you got to blame Trump. Because yes. he's the guy who makes the decisions. I, I agree with you a thousand percent. Anytime I have an employee that doesn't work out, I know it was something I did uh, or didn't do that uh, at the time of hire that uh, they, they didn't feel that the job as presented 
was what they were getting and doing. So I always look at management as the person that made the error, not the employee. But on the other hand, it's very, you know, in, in when you're trying to hire somebody, if you ask them, uh, you, know, uh, you know, what they do, the person says, well, I will, if you say jump, uh, you don't even have to ask how high. But as soon as you hire them and you give them a business card, the next day it's, well, I didn't know that that was in my job description. You know, so it, it, it's, it's like they take on a whole other persona. You know, Jeff, you've had a, a employees. Yeah, but I, you I see, think, look, you know, look, look, you can't think of running the government in the same way you think of running a business like yours or like Trump ran his but that's somewhat Trump bankrupt ran, organization. All right. That's Trump, Trump ran on was that he was a businessman and he was going to run well, things that like was, a that business. was the biggest lie of all, because he wasn't uh, a su- be- he wasn't a successful businessman. I understand, you know, he's he's successful enough that we don't have to buy him his next lunch. But, you know, on the on the on the other hand, I also voted for Perot because he, he was, was a he, was, he was broke enough and Tim backed me up on this. He was broke enough that he borrowed money from the Russians. Am I right about that, Tim? Yep, and and Deutsche Bank all, big money launderers. Hey, everybody that builds, you know, massive skyscrapers isn't doing it out of their own pocket. Uh, and, and and you always go to a bank. I, I go to a bank no, when no, I... He couldn't go to the American banks, Phil, because he doesn't pay people back. And he lies. And he, he even makes the bankruptcy judges mad. They had to put him on a budget because he was... Uh, during the bankruptcy, he was spending money hand over fist when he was owing all these people I don't money. know. If you ever bor- borrowed money from the Russians, you you know it's going to get paid back. <laughs> No, yeah, and well, oh, it's by being, letting them it, hack. Now, now here's the latest. He's starting to to fall down into paranoia because they're saying that General Kelly's phone was hacked. This yeah. is the latest news story. Yeah, and Can, now but, you can't have phones or electronic devices in the White House, mm-hmm. even if you're a tourist. Now, I haven't heard him talk about what the media is going to do. Now, do you think Kislyak and the foreign minister from Russia? Planted a few things when they were in the Oval <laughs> Office. I doubt it, but uh, you know, because they can. Sweep I don't know. They they, they 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 got guys that go in and and sweep for that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, but there's there's some there's very new, very sophisticated technologies that yeah. we may not be aware of. Uh, maybe but, somebody who, put one how of those. How did they hack General Kelly's phone then? Well, maybe they put one of those ring doorbells uh, on the Oval Office, and uh, so now he's overreacting. And he's sounding paranoid now. It's because yeah. Kirshner... Well, wait, Kevin's joined anything. us, by the way. Kevin has joined us. Hi, no, Kevin. I was just going to throw in there. It's because Kirshner's taking up all the bandwidth on the Wi-Fi. <laughs> right, moving all of his email to the Trump.org yeah. server. Yeah, it slowed everybody down. And what's all this? The latest story is that uh, Trump helped to stifle an investigation into uh, Ivanka and uh, Jared Kushner's... Uh, uh, business dealings that uh, they were going to get in some real trouble on. I can't. Uh, maybe you know. They commit, it's, the, it's the Soho Project. Yeah. And uh, the, the, they committed fraud because they said that these condos at Soho were selling hand over fist. They were selling like hot cakes, and, and when they hadn't start, hardly sold anything at all. So Cyrus Vance, who was the district attorney, got a twenty-five thousand dollar donation from. Um, the attorney for Trump, and I can't think of his name now, it's terrible, uh, uh, but he returned the money because that wouldn't look right. And, and Cyrus Vance had a pretty clean record. And Sam, then all these people Maria. that already bought the condos filed a civil suit. Trump settled for 90 cents on the dollar. These people got 90% of their investments back on the condos because of all the false advertising. It, but as part of the agreement, they had to agree not to cooperate with the district attorney. So he basically paid off the prosecutor, and he paid off the witnesses to make it go away. And then, two months after this all happened, Trump's attorney arranged for a money-raising event for Cyrus Vance's campaign and raised over $50,000, and Vance kept that money. Unfortunately, he's running unopposed this following November. But it's ruined his reputation. I thought Cyrus because, Vance, Tim. I thought Cyrus Vance was in the Reagan and, and early Bush administration. Well, you know, I, maybe it's not Cyrus Vance. I could be wrong. 
but uh, I, I don't know if it's the same guy or not. I don't think so. But his last name is Vance. I don't know his first name. Oh. So, yeah. but uh, so he is uh, Trump thinks he's above the law, and it's true for any rich people um, that you're above the law. Um, you can buy your way out of it. So it's just, um, and how even if they got the charges dropped, some of the ex CIA people are saying they should have never got security clearance with that kind of Tim, stuff Tim, in their background because you know, there was Tim, an investigation. Tim, do you know the golden rule? No, I've never had enough gold to abide by. But go ahead. Well, he who has the gold makes the rules. That's the gold. Yeah, but, but who has the gold? Russia and Deutsche Bank, not Trump. Not Trump. All right. Well, we have no proof that he has any money. We have no Except proof. that he doesn't pay people. He's never yeah. paid off on any of his debts. So. Well, you, you know, know that. I, you know what I saw today? He spends enough travel money for all the trips to his golf courses to send 165 cargo, uh, cargo loads of supplies to Puerto Rico. They have some cargo loads there. They can't move them. They're saying, and uh, I saw on CNN uh, <laughs> that uh, they they were showing all of the uh, containers that were full of food and medical yeah, supplies and so forth. And they said they, need to they get can't more get them moved out anywhere. Well, they can't get them moved out anywhere, and uh, there and there's more stuff coming, and they have no room for them. And they're all only nine, yeah, ninety-one percent is still without power. They yeah. need to triple their efforts down there. Well, these 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 containers were all refrigerated, and they all had uh, uh, generators, uh, fuel f uh, fueled generators, uh, right. uh, uh, keeping them running. And, and, the, and the hospitals, the state of the hospitals, is like a third world country. Well, the was, hospitals was are out of supplies. They're out of. And they fuel, had to unload. But don't you, don't you understand, Tim? Don't you understand, Tim? It's their fault, according to Trump. Yeah, you know, well, just, he, it, he only he should, have, he should have spent a couple of days down it, there. It, he should have been on this at, at, on day had, one. Had to to Las Las Vegas. Vegas. Look, look, wait, Tim. Tim, Tim why? He went, he went why, to wait, Las hold Vegas. on a second, Tim. Why should he have spent a couple of days down there? He wasn't going to be able to do anything. He doesn't have any concept of how you solve a problem like that. Oh, well, I'm talking about a normal person. I'm sorry, I got I could. I lost, I lost my hey, head for a bit. I saw him throw in those paper towel rolls, and everybody yeah. was, you know, it was like like, uh, like when you're on a game show. Hey, throw one to me. Throw one to me. You know, they were all... You know, he should have gotten one of those T-shirt guns. Just the autograph. And, you yeah. Know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, autograph bounty. But, uh, well, uh, you know, I think the day he went to Puerto Rico, he forgot to take his meds. Nah. Because when he went to Vegas, he obviously was on his meds. But, oh, but that's right. The shooter was a white guy. Yeah. And the people that got shot were white country music fans. Yeah. He was in his element. Yeah, yeah. He, it was, he had to go there because that's his audience. Well, they, they and also he, said and he's that... Got a, he's got a hotel there or something, doesn't he? He had... Yeah, a, yes, I think he has a hotel there. Yeah, yeah you can see it. It's, next it, to it, it, it's, not one, it's not one of the bigger hotels, though. It's, no, you know, it's, it's, it's one this big. What would you say, Mike? Than it's big. It's a big... It's a huge Plus, hotel. he has to toe the line when he's a few blocks away from Sheldon Adelson. Well, I'll bet you, know, I, I'll bet you he had nothing to do with building it. All he did was sell his name to be put on it. Well, maybe, uh, but he had to get a gaming license... And uh, I remember that there was some some BS over that. Uh, uh, you know, he had to have a gaming license to own the hotel. I, I, I think you can. I think you can own. I think you can own the hotel, and and not have to have a gaming license. What has to have a gaming license is the hotel, and so right. therefore. Uh, what you're doing is uh, you simply have to have a, a gaming license for the hotel. You ones can own, you can own the hotel and maybe not own the casino. But okay. the ones in Jersey, he had the gaming licenses too. Yeah. Uh, uh, and if he, I remember and he, and right, he lost some money BS on, going on. He lost over. money on that deal. How do you run a, a a casino and lose money? I just don't. I it, it boggles uh, my mind. You have a hurricane and it wipes the place out, and then the, the Indians attack. No, no, no. Attack this was you. before the hurricanes. Uh, no, no, no. Atlantic you know, City. I, does anybody know? 
he's he's had six bankruptcies technically of his organization but he has had his name used for many many projects he's managed projects including the golf course in puerto rico that went on under how many projects was he involved in his management or having his name that also went bankrupt not just the six that he was was owned by his corporation i've asked that to a few people nobody seems to know so i think the number of bankruptcies is much much higher T- didn't he hire his uh, project managers off of his TV show? If you won the TV show, The Apprentice, then uh, you them, manage yeah. one of his projects. Yeah, Omarosa is still around, right? Yeah. Yeah, she's there sucking his dick. Uh, yes, Mike. <laughs> okay, the way I understand from a friend of mine told me, when a corporation uh, has a big corporation, I think when does not like Trump, period. Of his hotel, but if you own the hotel and a casino, you, I think uh, you have to apply to different applications from each hotel. You have to file an uh, application from the gambling Nevada uh, deal mm-hmm. from the state of Nevada and get your license. And I forgot how many licenses you can get, you know, for that. I'm not sure. But if you buy a hotel, I think you can get away. If you buy a hotel, let's say, Bill Bar, let's say Trump uh, Hotel in Vegas, he pays for the hotel and he has to pay separate for the uh, license for the uh, for the gambling deal, which is not cheap. No. Uh, you know, uh, the, the Trump Hotel, if you look at the pictures of the Mandalay Bay that the news uh, media is putting up, uh, uh, the Trump Hotel is next door, and it's a little bit taller. Uh, and somebody had mentioned uh, that, you know, what if the shooter stayed at the Trump and 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 uh, and shot? That would have been uh, quite an interesting. Uh, yeah, I said that last night. Well, that I think he pick, I, 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 a little I, political statement. There, I, huh? I think I think he picked the hotel that had the uh, the best Cops. view of this. Of yes, this that's what it was. Situation. Uh, well, he he was a uh, registered gambler at the Mandalay Bay. He gets uh, certain VIP treatment. He gets his rooms comped uh, and, and so forth. And that's. That may be why he picked the man. Well, if he was alive right now, he'd have to pay for those broken windows. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And by the way, they have not fixed those windows yet because I bet bet the police say this is a crime scene. You can't do anything. Right. Yeah. And there's that one with that piece hanging out. Looks like it's going to fall out any time now. Well, I'm wondering how did he break the glass and not have it fall? Well, that's what I was trying to figure out. It did. Had to fall down, so there should have been a special hammer. He had some kind of hammer, they said. Yeah, but it falls yeah. out. He, he probably, you know, he's had help. Somebody had to help him plan the logistics. Now, I'll throw this out there, and then I won't call for a couple weeks. But what if he's a Manchurian candidate, and he just wants to stir up the, the NRA debate in this country and cause more division? Because this, all this stuff that's happening falls right in Putin's pocket. Hmm. The stuff, with how Puerto Rico's being handled. Tim, stuff for the NRA arguments? I don't know. Tim, we thought you were the Manchurian candidate. I thought Tim was Alex Jones there for a second. I think yeah. the, per- the percentage of possibilities is very, very, very low. You know, anybody who gripes as much about the other guy as you do, and you were in the Social Security Administration, we think that maybe you were a Russian plant. And uh, you, you, no, we you were in the black. The, the Social, Security, Social Security's been in the black for almost 100 years. Never been in the red. Carried the rest of the government. Best damn program in the history of the universe. Oh, so yeah, don't, but, but don't I, until, until the Republicans stole some of that money. That's right. Yeah, they, you know, all, you know all, we, all we have left is an IOU in, in a safe in the Treasury, to, in the U.S. Treasury, saying they owe Social Security money. There's no real trust fund. There's no money invested yeah. in U.S. Treasury bills. It's just an so, IOU note. So what you're and, saying, and I think, I think was it, uh, Bush did that. Well, yeah. what, they, what they ran around saying was is that Social Security was on the brink of collapse and that it would fa- fail in so many years and so on. And all I could think was, well, the reason is because these guys stole from Social Security. But, yeah, what, what they were really selling, saying is, hey, we borrowed all your money at a very low interest rate, we, and we know we're not going to be able to pay it back. Social Security, 
and really just a few minor changes, so it's pretty would be great for another 50 years. And another thing, if you have a massive program like that that's in the black for 100 years, shouldn't they be allowed to run in the red for a few years like other businesses and then go back in the black? I didn't know. Why are they? Why? Uh, it doesn't make any sense. They just it saved so many people from poverty. It's yeah. kept our, it's from having many depressions. And then they say things like, oh, well, we're going to raise the uh, age at which you can get it. I think it's now 66 and a half or something and not 65 like it was when I got it. And I'm saying to myself, you know, considering the job uh, jobs out there and who can get them and who can't, we really should start giving Social Security at six at 55. Well, and, they it's, and, it's, and it's, people forget it's yeah. people forget it's darn good coverage for young families if if the worker becomes disabled or the dies. I don't know how many claims I took for families that would have been homeless within 30 days if if it wasn't mandatory for people to be covered under Social Security and have just top notch disability and survivor coverage getting their kids at least through high school yeah, and giving money to the widows later on, depending, at least at age 60. Uh, and people forget, you know, I could put my money and save it, and uh, 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 I'd have more money than that in the Social Security. Yeah, but if you die tomorrow, your family has nothing, or if you become disabled, you have nothing, but you get Medicare. You know, it's been a great, really a great program, I think. Yeah. And at least a few age, if you got insurance at a young age... Uh, and uh, and, and uh, you no. paid for it as you were working. Uh, if you died, you would uh, you would, you could do pretty good, you know. hundred thousand dollars, hundred thousand dollar policy would not last at all. No, if, if no. You are a good, if you're a good wage earner, most fam working families can't afford insurance. Well, Mom don't have life insurance. But then hardly anybody would ever go out and buy disability insurance because it's just too darn expensive. I yeah. just buy nursing home insurance, and I make good money. I couldn't afford it. Well, you know, I had a friend that uh, had disability insurance, and he bought the policy at the time that he was making close to a half a million dollars a year. And uh, he was paying, uh, he paid for 25 years. He actually had to use it. Uh, and what happened was they paid him $11,000 a month, and they did it for uh, one year. And then they sent him to a psychologist, and the psychologist says, you can work through the pain, and they stopped paying him. And uh, yeah, you're going to fight for it. It's not, it's not always easy to get the disability. It, it was but, uh, uh, even some of the people that were shot at the, at the big massacre. Some of those people will be able to make it because they're going to get Social Security if they can't go back to work. Yeah. Well, so, he, uh, he's medical field and they uh, and he had a very physical kind of job. And uh, they uh, you know, they, these insurance companies are, are crooked. And uh, the I'm trying to remember the name of the insurance company, but there was a, 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 a there, I don't want to say it because I don't remember exactly which one it was. But this insurance company did this to a lot of people. Uh, they they don't pay. Uh, and, uh, and if you look at some of the research on Sandy Hook, and there was a big scandal. The 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 uh, the, 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 the the people that write up who goes up and writes up the damage reports. I forget their names. Uh, the adjusters. The adjusters with, all the adjusters' reports, there were several insurance companies where the higher-ups took those adjusters' reports, changed them to show no property damage. There was a big scandal about, and I forget which insurance companies, companies but if you Google it, you can find that they, they did it, you know, a lot in the Sandy Hook and, and other times. I had a friend that just had problems with uh, water damage his landlord caused, and he had to fight with it, and, and he ended up having a threat to go to the state insurance. And then they finally paid yeah. up. Now, by the First way, they said it wasn't covered, and they quoted the wrong part of the policy, and he just went round and round. This is common practice for insurance companies. You're he right. meant state insurance board. State, yeah, absolutely, state insurance board. But now they want the health insurance to be able to go across state lines. Good Who's idea. Who's going to control that? Nobody's going to control that. That just doesn't make any sense at all. Plus, the markets are so much different as far as cost of health insurance. And this new tax plan and the budget is taking money away from Medicare and Medicaid. You know, you guys know that. So yeah. I don't know what we can do about anything about yeah. it. But well, welcome yeah. to the Tim and, uh, and, and Phil show because the other people haven't said a word. I'll well, shut up. I'll, I'll, no, I'll, I'll put on your well. No, 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 no. Don't do that, Tim. When you feel you have something to say, say it. Mm. But 
Uh, oh, sure. You know, but I, we haven't got many callers tonight. If I say not many callers. I would have been happy with this many a while back, but I'm getting spoiled by having so many people <laughs> calling the show, and nobody, and nobody's calling it tonight. I just sent a note off to Rob Alfano saying, "Where are you?" I, because I don't yeah. hear from a guy like Rob, who's kind of a regular for three days. If I didn't hear from you for three days, Phil, I'd worry. Yeah, I know. And you yeah. did once, uh, yeah. and it was just one day. <laughs> it was just one day. Yeah, I was worried about you. And then Jeff, too. I've Jeff's gotten notes from yeah, me. Yeah, same thing. You know, yeah. uh, because I, I, I... I think of Rob. Rob is your Ed McMahon, Alex. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love having Rob on the show. So. I don't know what Phil is. Maybe he's the band director, but... <laughs> <laughs> and the band played on, huh? Yeah, and I mean, he's right there. He's got good rhythm, but once in a while, he misses the beat, you know. Yeah. Well, anyway, I got a story here, okay? This, okay. this one, this is a story I did not see anywhere on the news today. Uh, and I wound up in a, in a, 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 a literally an a, a entertainment uh, website. Uh, but here, here's the story. Have you heard this? Donald Trump has urged lawmakers in Washington today to launch an investigation of the news media. I heard, I heard that. Trump sent out a tweet this morning in which he wrote, Why isn't the Senate Intel Committee looking into the fake news networks in our country and see why so much of our news is made up fake? Now, That's an idea. Well, it's a great idea because maybe we can find out how this son of a bitch got elected. Probably it was because, he, you know, I don't know what he's complaining about with the networks because they got him fucking elected by paying so much attention to him. He didn't have to spend money on advertising. They did it all for him. He didn't want to get elected. They got him elected and he's pissed. That, that could know, be. He's, that's, mad, he's mad, mad about the, mad. He's mad about the Tillerson story. He's mad about Tillerson calling him a moron and NBC putting that fake news out there. That's what he's mad about. <laughs> now, that's, that's uh, exactly Tillerson what didn't meant. confirm or deny that he called him a moron. No, this but it's been, it's been backed up by multiple sources. And w whether it's true or not, Trump can't handle that. That And, and he needs Tillerson. Who else is... He, he, how, how, who would he ever get to replace Tillerson? Who would take that job? Anybody? Anybody? Anybody know who we could get to replace? Hillary no, Clinton. Other I'll than Nick. Well, Nicky, <laughs> Nikki Haley, but I don't think no, I don't think Nikki's real. up to the job. I'll do it. Alex is always I'll looking for a job. <laughs> Tillerson has, you know, I, I had a lot of uh, questions about Tillerson because I didn't like him because he was a big businessman, but he's been acquitting himself rather well as Secretary yeah, but, of State. But, but can you imagine running the biggest country in the world, company in the world? And now had to, having to grovel. For yeah, Trump. Well, his problem is, is that because of the way Trump has been treating him, he goes to a country like, say, China and talks with the prime minister of China or the president of China, whatever the title is there. And he is not given the weight that a normal secretary of state would get because they don't know whether they he's speaking. They don't know. Well, they don't know whether he's speaking for the president or not. That whatever deal they make with Tillerson, will it be followed up and okayed by Trump? You know. Yeah. What, uh, and what? What if they decertify Iran agreement? That's going. We'll have no credibility for any agreements ever again. Well, you, you know, you have to remember that that agreement is not ours to 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 end. No, no, uh, but no, but he's going to try to trash it. Be, and, because uh, there are how it's many? Only how many, because Obama made it. it yeah, but there are, how, there are how many countries involved in the Iran agreement? I, I think it's six, but I'm not sure. Something like that. And if we get out of it, uh, okay, well, it still doesn't change things, you know. No, no. Iran said if we get out, they'll just start building as many nuclear weapons as they can because you know we're letting the, uh, North Korea do it. And they and, pretty and, much have said and, if we get out, they're going to start. Building. And by the way, I heard today, and I, I don't know this to be the truth, but I heard today that um, um, uh, Iran has been very good at keeping to their word on this uh, accord that they signed. Yeah, the, everybody in the administration says they've been following it. And and this has been the most, they have more inspectors than any agreement in history. Uh, we have better inspections with Iran than, than anything in history we've had before. So it's not perfect, but if, it's better than having nothing. Yeah, but that if we get out of this or if we do away with this, 
we're asking for more trouble than we need because we're good, our, our credibility is going out the window. We will never be able, as long as Trump is president, be able to sign any kind of an accord with anybody because they, they'll keep thinking, well, he's not going to live up to it. It was a bad yep. deal, and all Obama did was kick the can down the road. Obviously, it wasn't a bad deal, Phil, because they have been they have been going along with it. They have not and, built nuclear so weapons. Ten years from the time the agreement was made, then they'll they'll be able to pursue making an atomic bomb. Look, I've got a deal with FiOS where I've got my internet for a certain amount of money for two years. At the end of two <laughs> years, if they decide to raise the rate on me, I can go, well, I'll go back to Spectrum. And then they'll go, well, we'll make a deal with you and we'll give you a cut. Yeah. You, 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 you don't talk about 10 years from now what's going to happen. You deal with it now. You've gotten them to stop developing these weapons. They are not developing them. Uh, they are being watched. They Everybody says that they're living up to the agreement, Iran, and that we should live up to the agreement as well. And that's not just yeah. but that's not just people who don't like Trump. Those are Republicans who say it in the Congress that they they're not for uh, well, stopping this Trump, accord with uh, with uh, uh, Iran. That, that, that was one Trump of the, the said plot lines in Homeland. No. Well, uh, one look, of the plot one, lines one at a time. Was, it, yeah. Wait Iran was getting North Korea to build the, the nukes for him. Uh, you know, we have no they still are, there. probably. Uh, you know, Trump said he was going to pull out of NATO, and he didn't do it. Trump said that he was going to do a lot of things, that he, uh, and then he learned a little bit more about the situation and didn't do it. Uh, you know, what he's doing with North Korea is something that should have been done uh, four pres three presidents ago, and uh, and wasn't and now it's come to the point where this guy is is blowing off atomic bombs like they're firecrackers and uh and somebody's got to deal with it wait a minute who's blowing off bombs like they're firecrackers uh kim john -un. Oh, oh kim jong un well that's a different story altogether but, uh, the problem so, with trump is he thinks there's actually a military a military alternative there is no alternative unless you want to kill about three four or five million people now you've even without read, nuclear. You you've read the have you read Sun Tzu's book, The Art of War? It, it's seventy pages, and they still use it at West Point Military Academy. Yeah, I've heard of. I have not read it. Okay, well, basically, one of the strategies that they use is that if you have overwhelming power, and the other guy. Uh, it was very similar to what happened in Paris during World War II when the Nazis uh, rolled in. Uh, they didn't. They didn't put up a fight. Why? Because the Nazis had overwhelming forces, and uh, they, there was no use in them fighting, so they surrendered. Well, it's that strategy may be what Trump is using uh, for uh, North Korea. In, in, in a conventional warfare, we do not have overwhelming force. They have their stuff hidden. Almost half the country is in the military. We would not. We would not do fare very well. They might win a conventional war, and a nuclear war. Nobody wants to go there because then you're talking about ten. Of million course people, not. Right? But that. But the threat of the nuclear war is the overwhelming but power. No, but he's no dummy. He's not psychotic. Kim Jong Un knows. We're not going to drop not the nuke. Did you see what he did to his brother and his uncle? Let me put it this way. He's not as crazy. He's not as, he's not as much of a loose cannon as Trump is. Okay? That's the way no. I feel about yeah, it. Yeah, I... I just I worry yeah. about. Uh, uh, let me let me. Uh, and, and everybody else has been suspiciously quiet. It sounds uh, like a, a discussion between you and Tim on the show tonight. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I, yeah, I'm open. To I'd like to hear what Jeff has to say and what Kevin has to say and what Mike has to say about all of this. <clears throat> I think that uh, Phil is always over uh, planning. Uh, Trump is doing everything to ref. And yeah. quite frankly, uh, you got to show me what he's done that's been good. I, I haven't seen anything. Uh, I know he insults the shit out of people. He insults people that work for him. Uh, he insults uh, people in, in, in the United States. Uh, and I, I think he's a pretty crappy manager. And, well, and I and and uh, and a lousy president. I, I and and if, let, it was, let him if it was my job, I'd fire him. Yeah. 
Well, I have to agree with you on that. You know, when uh, when I have an employee that makes a decision and it wasn't a good decision, uh, or maybe there are better ones that could have been made, I'm never going to throw them under the bus and uh, and uh, say you should have done this. I just say, okay, we made we made a choice. We went with it. Give the customer what you promised, and next time let's do something different. Yeah. Uh, you know? Uh, and that's what Trump needs to do, and I don't understand why he doesn't do it. Uh, you know, it's pretty basic. Basically, because yeah. I think he's a terrible businessman. I think he's a terrible manager of people. I think this is why he has been in so many bits of hot water over the years, financially and every other way, was because of just this kind of management style. He knew how to but be the bully. He to, didn't know how everybody to... Everybody points to his children. He had he raised wonderful children. Fraud, fraudulent, but wonderful. Look, uh, you know, it's very easy when you're dealing in that level of thing to to get in involved in stuff that uh, when they look back on it, they they don't think it's right. You know, nobody stands there with his attorney. Uh, well, maybe some people, but <clears throat> you know, nobody has their attorney advising them at every step. And uh, you know, they're in the private world. They're not. They're not. You know, their their corporation's not public. They don't have to answer to anybody, uh, and you know and that. And that's part of it. You know, when you have a public corporation, you're you're under the microscope. And he was in a private one. Hmm. Oh well. Okay. So anyway, I've run out of stuff. Uh, I know a lot of people who are in that kind of a business. I I think you're in that kind of a business. Yeah. I know when I was in business, I was in that kind of business, and 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 you just don't operate that way. No, uh, I, I, you I, can. I, I used to work with a guy, yeah. and you know, he worked for me. He was an engineer, and we and uh, we were working for another company, and and we had these uh, nice instruments. And we didn't have very many of them. So he went over to the quality yeah. control guys. They had one that they used all the time to inspect and compare it to other ones. Yeah. And he took it. And he borrowed it, so to speak. Yeah. And everybody made a big deal about it. And he goes, no, no, I really need it. I got to buy it, this, that. Well, two days later, it's it got stolen. Wow. And everybody goes, what happened? Well, I don't know. I was in my office. And, you know, we never took things home. It's just somebody took it and stole it. And I'm sorry. And it wasn't me. Two months later, I happened to go in the guy's house. And there it is. And stuff was there. Yeah. You no. know, that's Trump. He's a crook. Yeah. Well, I, I, don't, I don't know that he's a crook but uh you know i i don't uh, particularly i can smell it and that's a crook yeah well you know uh, the only guy who knows what when it smells bad is mike uh, <laughs> you know, but uh what? well you you know fish but uh you know if if a guy has got a bad management style uh you know, those things can be improved uh, you know, they they can get a guy. They can get the uh, the, the uh, who's the guy, uh, the Stephen Coveys, uh, to to counsel and to and to you know to help them. You know, uh, I think I think Trump's smart enough to know that you got to go to a Stephen Covey to, to to get a better management style. No, he he goes to Steve Bannon and Alex Jones. Yeah, well, that's not good management style. And he I'm watches just... Fox and Friends. He thinks all all media should be like Fox and Friends. Well, so do I. <laughs> Except no, I don't yeah, get Fox and president. Friends anymore. I don't get Fox and Friends anymore. Now that I've got uh, Sling TV, uh, that's not one of the ones I get. But uh, and you know my my bandwidth is so bad it keeps freezing up, and uh, it never used to do that. Uh, I don't know, uh, you know, I don't know why. I called uh, Wave today. Yeah. 
and uh, they have fiber optics, and, and uh, they said that that one gig thing that you have mm -hmm. is going to be available soon in my area. Well, I got to tell you something. Yeah. Uh, uh, it was with great trepidation I went to FIOS, okay, mm -hmm. because, you know, I, I was used to having Time Warner, which then became Spectrum, but I got so mad at Spectrum. Uh, yeah. uh, you remember how I got literally physically ill. I lost. I went from 187 pounds down to 199, 179 in five days, okay, of going well. through that shit with them. That I just said, that's it, and I went to Fios. And I started having problems with Fios, I mean, with the installation and everything. The first thing they did was they, they, in, they installed the lowest thing they could install. And I, I found for five bucks more a month, I could have gotten this extended thing. So I then put that in that they charged me $100 for the reinstallation, okay? Yeah. Which it, it, somehow my bill is very low anyway. I have no idea. But anyway, the point is that I went to Fios reluctantly, and then I had some problems with Fios where they were driving me crazy. But once everything was solved, once I got all my uh, hard drives online, my network hard drives online, once I got... And they sent somebody out to look at that, and he spent three hours figuring out what was wrong. Wow. Uh, and, and then they installed the new thing where, where I paid 100 bucks. but okay, so they installed it. Uh, I got to tell you, I absolutely love Fios. I just love them. I, and I've yeah. never said that about a cable company in my life. You know, well, they but, don't have it in my area. But, I mean, the speed I get here, I mean, when I upload shows to the server... To, to go daddy it's like you know yeah. i mean it, it, it i i i don't have to blink you know what yeah. they call it wave out here uh and it used to be astound i think but well, uh it's probably it's, there are getting to be quite a few fiber optic people but it is fiber optics right into the apartment i mean the fiber optic ends right here in back of my this monitor here that yeah. people can see this monitor here. Yeah. Well, it's lately, back there. Lately, uh, every you know, Jeff was talking. He was freezing. You were talking. You were freezing. But it was only me. I mean, I on the Facebook feed. Tonight which, you're fine. Tonight you're yeah, with this yeah. fine. Yeah, on the Facebook feed, nobody's freezing. Uh, I'm yeah. not listening to it on that. But uh, the you know the audio and everything on my uh, yeah. mini uh, it, through Skype is. Yeah. Uh, well, I've just got to say to everybody that I, I'm delighted with Fios. I mean, I, I, I said it tonight to girlfriend, and then I got the bill. The bill's supposed to be $233 a month because I got this extra $5 a month for the, the extended service, right? Uh, yeah. Which is a whole different service than, than what I had before. And we get the, the bill comes out this month because you can go online and see how much you owe, and it says $221. Okay, it's the first time I've ever been told that I had to pay less than I than they told me I was going to have to pay, but if they're saying two hundred twenty-one, send off that check, you know, which is I might add about two one hundred and fifteen dollars cheaper than what I was paying to Time Warner and Spectrum. Yeah, you know, uh, and uh, and quite a bit cheaper than when I finally got Spectrum to go down. It went to like two seventy. So compare that to. 221 and i'm getting this this throughput is on the on the internet is just i mean it's mind-boggling you mm. know and i don't want to make you feel bad but you know i'm probably looking pretty clear to everybody you know and i've never had the signal drop on me you know i always had it dropping before because cable modems uh are on a uh, node and so yeah. if all of a sudden you've got a ton of other people using it watching netflix as an example, uh, your your bandwidth is going to go down because you're sharing the node. The bandwidth so the never the loves to play Minecraft. The ba <laughs> the bandwidth never goes down on this thing. It's just constant, you know. Now it, it it's also dependent though. If I go to GoDaddy and some nights it's slower than other nights, it's not me. It's them. Yeah. You know. But but I I've got to say that it used to take me maybe a minute to upload my show, which is about 56 um, megs, um, megabytes, 
and uh, it used to take about 30 seconds to a minute. Now it takes, I swear to you, under five seconds. Wow. It's just zip. You know, and a show like the, like the Exchange, which is an even smaller file, boop, you know, I mean, it's, it's amazing. Uh, and, that, and I love it. I, you know, and people say also the show sounds better, that I, there's a clearer signal going out over the Internet. So, yes, Jeff. Yeah. I think this is just another indication of the advantages of running businesses under a higher speed computerized system and mm -hmm. and and a lot of things is that used to be manufactured by people are being manufactured by computers and and equipment and machines and that's why a lot of people who used to have jobs don't want to have them anymore well, they're, they're it, won by, uh, it, by it, a computer, let's face yeah. it. You know, when I, as I say, as I was growing up, and, and, and Phil knew me back then, I was always into technology. Yeah. I was always into the newest technology, and boy, won't this be wonderful when I can do this and I can do that and so on. And that made me feel, you know, I, it was the world I was looking forward to. And now I think it turns out to be a, a, a curse rather than a blessing. You know, I the mean, monster that we created now devours. Maybe, us. It, maybe it wasn't bad when I used to have to go to find a telephone booth to make a call somewhere and see if I had a quarter. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. Because at least I'm not getting all those calls from people spamming me. You yeah. Know? Hey, the higher works. The higher works. I, well, it we, works to an, a certain extent. It it doesn't work a hundred percent. No, but it works better than most. Hyatt, you know, by the way, folks, is a program you can get that uh, makes you Hyatt. No, uh, yeah. it, 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 it uh, uh, is a uh, cell phone it, app. It, it, it it's an, an app that tells you when you're getting spam, a spam call. And, and now well, it's starting to tell you exactly what it is, you know, yeah, what kind I, of spam got, it is. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'll go to the... Uh, uh, thing because uh, my oh I cleared all my calls uh, from the phone because well, I was like I'll, I'll, I'll let you know what mine said here hold on a second I've got a, a list it of told one was a was a spoof number and one was a spam call and and uh, one of the numbers I called it back the the spam call and it says oh you know it was one of those recordings you know it was a spam call or a solicitor yeah and. Well, here, I mean, for instance, it says, uh, I, have tr I have true caller as well, and Haya. It says spam, uh, fake something. Uh, and then another one from true caller, fake, um, let me see here. What, what is, no, it's calling it back. I don't want to call it back. But anyway, uh, I got some robocaller. It says from, that's from Haya. It says it's a robocaller. Haya, another robocaller. In other words, it really tells you what they are. Haya tends to just say robocaller, and uh, uh, the other one does it Hyatt another told way. told me about spoof number today, you know, how they spoof uh, phone numbers, uh, because this phone number had the same exchange as my cell phone. Oh, yeah, yeah. And uh, and, and so it said that it was a spoofed number. Uh, you know, they, oh, they really? cloned. Uh, yeah. yeah, but... Yeah, but so, um, but here's the thing, you got every day the problem is every day it doesn't do it automatically. You have to go to Haya and you get updated and, and tell them like right now I'll tell them uh, blocklist is in for protect and it's updating and now it's taking a while to update it. Uh, but once it's updated then you're then you're but you see it's taken time. I I can upload my whole show faster <laughs> than, than the Haya updates. Than yeah, the Haya updates and then uh, come on finish off um, now, it's hard to believe how many scammers there are so 14,000 spammers were added today yeah uh, um, and uh, the hood scam surges 15 times in 2017 uh, imitates first six digits of phone numbers yeah uh, a true caller does it faster um, but it, it uh, let me see here I went to uh, Haya Let's, see Let's say you get a spam call. Does both True Caller and Haya come up and tell you that that number is spammed, or do they fight with each other? Uh, no, they don't fight with each other. They must have different lists. 
Uh, no, it says you are protected from 2,004, 688 unwanted callers. Uh, but, you know, every day they're coming up with new spoofs. And so it, it has a hard time, I think, keeping up with all of them. So this is the McAfee of phones. Well, you know what's good about it? I'll tell you. It, it, what it doesn't do is I was thinking, oh, well, the program would be great if it just didn't let the call come through. Right. But the problem is it does let the calls ring. And yes. you just don't answer them. When you don't answer them, then there's an assumption on the part of the machine that you either don't exist or that you don't answer calls or whatever. And so, you're, you, you know, if you keep answering those calls, you'll start getting more of those calls. Well, wait a minute. You are answering them in one way. When you, when you, when you decline a call, doesn't it go to your voicemail? I don't decline it. it, it they'll, oh, they'll, they'll, they'll get some voicemail if they keep ringing. Uh, yeah. But uh, I very seldom ever have the recording talk to my machine. My no, no, because they know it's a voicemail. By the way, they... you know, there, there are a lot of things in this world that we no longer have. And I, they, they, I just thought of one here. You know, we mention them all the time. Answering machines. Anybody here what? have an answering machine? Yeah, uh, I got one right here. Do you really? <laughs> yeah. Why, Kevin? I have no idea. Well, because it came with my five phone set. Okay. How about you, Mike? Why you have one? I got yep. But with my three, like uh, Kevin, you know, I it came with the set with the phone. They came huh. with the phone, but I mean, you you don't have a physical answering machine, right? No. Oh, no. You, and you don't either, Kevin. No, I do. Oh, you do have a physical one. So how, you, how many? How many? Jeff had his hand up. Jeff had his hand up. Jeff. I have one. Uh, Not, the reason I have a regular phone line hmm? yeah. is I use it to to uh, inspect my uh, pacemaker once ah. a day. Oh, okay. Uh, and, you need, uh, and, you, and it can't be done wirelessly. It has to be done with a wired phone. Yeah, they're pretty happy with, with that system. Because it works Do you know in well. some places in the country, I was talking to this guy who was staying here, he said um, he, can't, um, he can't get a wired phone in his neighborhood now any longer. Yeah, I don't, they I don't, don't put in one. wired phones any longer. The copper is out. Well, I, See, I've I, never, I've never had the balls to, to to cut the cord there because in our area here, we're down in the in the Hollister Gilroy area. Yeah. But if we call nine one one, it goes up to Santa Cruz, and then it gets dispatched out from there, which is fifty miles away. Yeah. So you got all this in between uh, crap. Yeah. Whereas when you call 911 on the landline, it'll go straight to the station. Kevin, Kevin I have this old 3G. Uh, I'm sure they have new ones now, but I got it from AT&T. And what it is is it uh, puts your cell phone on uh, wireless, but it also sets it up so that it uh, con connects with 911 locally. Yeah, so, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think they're outdated now. Well, uh, the one I have is, but I don't I don't know if they still have them. No, nah, they're I, supposedly working on that problem, so. No, I thought they had it out already. I thought there was out. That you could, if you had a cell phone, you can dial 911. It'll go directly. It, it may be, but I, in this area, I don't think so yet. Because they had done this, th like, a couple years ago. Yeah, that's exactly what my, my daughter had. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> but she was out in the boonies in the Central Valley. Yeah, I uh, they gave it to me when I was in the Oakland Hills, and I had uh, a, a hard time getting cell yeah, yeah. performance. And uh, I just haven't turned it back in. I've been meaning to walk it over there. and They'll probably just tell you to take it to the electronics waste dump. <laughs> well, uh, let them do it. <laughs> you know. The electronics waste dump? Yeah, yeah. The, uh, the Sorry, Boy Scout, that's what the Boy Scouts do nowadays. Instead of the paper drives and stuff like that, they collect electronic waste wow wow yeah we just had one around here mm -hmm. take your old crts down there and your old computers and they throw them into a dumpster and somebody goes well and all i'm saying is out. is that copper is very hard to find now copper phones and and the thing was when i first came to new york i i i you know i'm one of these old folks right i wanted a wired phone and so i had a wired phone and then I kept saying, why do I have a wired phone? I've got this, 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 I never thought of my cell phone as my only phone. But 
quite yeah. frankly, that's all you need now. And most kids, they don't call up the phone company and say, hey, I just moved into a new apartment. I want a phone. No. When I got no. divorced, uh, you know, I had a wired phone up until I got divorced. I moved out of the house. And uh, I, I said, well, I got the cell phone. Everybody's got this number. There's no, there's no reason for me to have a wired phone. And uh, so since 2003, no wired phone. Yeah, and well, uh, and now what happens is you get something like I get Fios, right? Yeah. And they go, oh, you know, it comes with a phone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so, you know, it, well, that, you, you know, if you don't take it, we're going to have to charge you more or something because it's not on a plan or something. So I have, you know, I and it, actually I have it so it, it rings over to this phone, to my cell that's phone. Probably, that's probably more of what I have. I got VOIP, obviously. You know, yeah. it's... It, it's it's an internet phone. The internet goes down. My phone goes down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not probably. It's not a real wire. This, you know, this, this, this phone. I hold. I have. I have phones. I have, I have hard. Basically, your old. You know, phones that you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the one it, in the wall. Huh? The one you plug in the wall. Well, it's plugged into the back of the modem. You know, mm -hmm. uh, but. Uh, okay. Well, it, yeah, it, yeah it's the same thing. Uh, and and I uh, you know but I have you have to have it so that's why I've got it I don't want it I didn't want it from Spectrum I didn't want it from yeah. Time Warner yeah. I never <laughs> use that number and well, if you well, ring that number it, you know, I know be I, no restrictions on and it. usually the only people that ever call that number are spam calls and it rings once and then I know my phone's going to ring yeah. you know yeah because you don't give the number to anybody I don't no no but I've had it forever. Uh, you yeah. know, I got my first, uh, you know, since I left one cable company and went to Fios, uh, I had to get rid of my old number, right? Mm. Which is, you know, pain in the ass. But finally, I think almost everything has been changed over, all right? Uh, and and so I don't have it anymore. By the way, in case you want to know, it's abennett at nyc.rr.com. Go ahead, write it. It's never going to get to me. <laughs> That's the old one. That's the old one, so I got have a new and so I have a new one and I do it through GabNet through my account at GabNet at uh, uh, because FiOS doesn't have email any longer. Yeah. See? Oh. So uh, because a lot of people are going with Gmail or things like that. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Uh, and so I but I still wanted my own, so I I pay a hundred and twenty bucks a year, and at GoDaddy I get a a email account both yeah. sending and receiving. All right. That's what I have to do. Yeah. And it's pretty good and it, it works just fine. So none of the spam people had that address. I got my first piece of spam the other day. I was going to say yet. <laughs> yeah, I got my first piece of spam and it was somebody trying to tell me that there was something wrong with my oh my, my Facebook. You had trouble getting onto Facebook. Uh, click here oh, to yeah. see what. And I went, nah, uh-uh. That ain't that's, that's I've gotten a couple of those from Microsoft again this week. Yeah. So I mean so I I've, no. I've made it to one spam list at least, you know. But well, the, the more will come. But yeah, it, they will they'll you'll they'll find you. Well, you know what yeah. I've done? What I've done is I put all my business accounts on another email account that I have. All yeah. right. Uh, so when I see something coming from that, I know it's like business and whatever. The rest of the stuff, if they want to use it for spam, go ahead, have a good time. You know so what? Do you, make it, do you make it private when you're on GoDaddy because you can do that. When you're on GoDaddy, you can make your uh, your email account. I guess it's not public. It's not exactly private, but I not think it's sure. yeah. Yeah. Hey, why don't you get a uh, email account now? Spam at gabnet uh, or at gabnet. So. Yeah. Uh, uh, this way, when you look, you know, let's say you're looking at something online and it wants you to put in your uh, your email account. You got one that says spam at uh, gabnet.net. I've got an email that does that. One of my email accounts is strictly for signing up for shit or yeah. if I'm going to give somebody, you know, buy something that they want my email address, I give them that email. So I know almost 99% of it's spam. I want, I was going to, I use uh, Alex Bennett at uh, NYC at RR. <laughs> you know what I, what I used tonight for the first time when I was trying to find some chat room or something, somebody wanted me, to, they had to sign up with them, or I had to give them an email address. And I suddenly realized I have an AOL account. There you <laughs> go. So I gave them the AOL account. Oh, yeah. You know, you and, know what and, I use for my greeting on my uh, answering machine? What, what do you uh, use? 
uh, the Monty Python song. Spam, 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 spam. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, customers, I have asked... Have you interviewed anybody from Monty Python? Uh, Monty Python? Yeah, John Cleese. Yeah. Yeah. He's pretty pretty good, isn't he? Pretty, pretty, pretty good? Bit. Pretty good? Man's a fucking genius. You know, I, yeah, asked, I think he's a genius. I didn't want to... Yeah. But uh, the best best one is where they're arguing. He goes to a place to pay to argue with people. And yeah, he yeah, argues yeah. on whether they've started arguing yet. Or, we're not That's arguing classic. yet. I'm not paying for this. This yeah. is not arguing. Well, to me, my my favorite show of all was uh, was was his Faulty Towers, which was yeah, just, I, we loved it. Absolutely yes. loved. It. it was way. It By the way, way was, Rob I, Rob Schneider said that was the show he kind of modeled his show on Netflix after, mm -hmm. uh, because he was such a fan of it. And he in fact talked to Cleese about it. And uh, it's, it's, it's did you? By the way, writing, by the it? way, did it's you did the you writing. watch the last episode of Rob's show yet? Uh, the latest season. Uh, Phil? Yes, I, I I did. Did you hear the music at the end? You know, I didn't notice it. That uh, was some pretty expensive music. He got Ennio Morricone to write a score for him, 10 minutes worth of music. Now, he I went to Bulgaria to the Sofia Philharmonic Orchestra and, wow. and recorded it, and it is a beautiful piece of music. This is a guy who won the Academy <laughs> Award last year for The Hateful Eight. What? I'm going to have to listen to that episode again. It was episode eight, season the last two, right? Ten, yeah, the last ten minutes. Okay. He's sitting, he's sitting in the airport, and then the music starts playing. Okay, that wasn't the one where he turned down uh, the deal, no. uh, the, uh, the movie yeah, with... Yeah, uh, that, that's where he's, oh, okay. he's at the airport, and he leaves and goes home, uh, rather than go to China and do the movie. And yeah. that music is Ennio Morricone, and it is... I mean, I listened to it... I. It's the only time I ever cried over anything that Rob really? Schneider did, but that music is so beautiful. Wow. Uh, I'm going to have to listen to that episode again, or at least the last 10 minutes. Well, I mean, minutes. I think this is the first time yeah. that Morricone's ever done yeah, music for a television yeah. show. Oh. You know, he usually yeah. does it. I mean, he, you know, he did Good, the Bad, and the Ugly, Once Upon a Time in America, all the Sergio Leone films he did. Yeah. And then he did Bugsy, and he, he on and on and on. And he's just... I think one of the greatest composers that ever lived, you know. And uh, he went out and he said, all he did is I called up his son, and his son said, it'll cost you so much to have him write you some music. And so he wrote it, and then somebody else uh, that worked for Morricone arranged it, and they sent it to Sofia, Bulgaria, where Rob trotted off to Bulgaria and watched a uh, something like an 80-piece orchestra <laughs> do this 10-minute track for his little TV show. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. It's am Brilliant. amazing. I'm just to say one thing about the AOL. You know, I collect my customers. Uh, I, I communicate with them via email. Yeah. So uh, oftentimes a lot of my customers are older and they have AOL accounts. So I ask them what their email is and they say it's, you know, yada yada at uh, AOL.com. I say, you know, I always have a problem spelling that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what, what about Yahoo? Didn't they get hacked for most of their account holders? Big yeah, time. Yeah, Big everybody's time. getting hacked. Uh, even uh, you know uh, uh, Equifax. You know, yeah, but, the, but the question is, gotta, what are they going to? The latest one is the N the NSA got hacked too. What what, what are they going to do with the stuff they've hacked? Is what the question is, and uh, you know, it. huh? Yeah. Sell, 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 sell it. Sell it on the black market. market. Yeah. Well, you'll be getting spam. Hey, your I Yahoo don't know account. Where this dark web you know. is? What's the address? What? You know? www.darkweb.com. You never found the dark web? It's www.darkweb.com. I bet there yeah. is one. I'll bet there is one. <laughs> Probably is. Yeah. Anyway, hey, I want to thank you, Mike, for being with us tonight. Thank you so much. Uh, Tim, always a pleasure. Keep calling. Don't think you're interrupting anything. We, I, I we, get passionate. We, we, I know you get passionate. Uh, Kevin, thank you. <laughs> Phil, thank you. Jeff, thank you. And all of you who didn't call tonight, fuck you. Okay? <laughs> In the meantime, I think what this group of people should do is wave bye-bye. Okay? Bye. There bye. they go. Oh, there they two go. hands. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, that was a nice two wave. Hands two hands. Two hand wave goodbye. Okay, nice. see you later. Bye-bye. Anyway, that's it for tonight. Uh, that's our citizens panel and all that they entail. Uh... 
Next is Jack and Amy with the uh, with a with a program called the uh, Intersection, and then at one o'clock this morning, Eastern Daylight Time, it's Connections coming to you from Florida. Uh, I'm Alex Bennett. Uh, you know, I'll be here again tomorrow night, same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her. Okay, bye. <laughs>